Here is your latest African news. Your news highlights. Africa wide. UK to cut import taxes for Africa. Nigeria. Nigerian authorities launch app to monitor crude oil theft. Kenya. Kenyan election chiefs math questioned. Mali. French troops fully withdraw from Mali, ending nine-year deployment. South Africa. African penguins endangered by ship noises in Algoa Bay. Diaspora. Environmental groups to U.S. over Puerto Rico dredging plan. Diaspora. Two former cops awaiting trial in George Floyd case reject plea deal. Africa-wide. UK to cut import taxes for Africa. The UK is to cut import taxes on hundreds of products from developing countries to boost trade links. The developing countries trading scheme comes into force in January 2023 and will build on a scheme that the UK was first part of while a member of the European Union. Goods such as clothes, shoes and foods not widely produced in the UK will benefit from lower or zero tariffs. The scheme covers 65 developing countries. It is on top of the thousands of products which developing nations can or Already export to the UK without tariffs and will affect around 99% of goods imported from Africa. The scheme includes powers to suspend a country on the grounds of human rights or labor violations and simplifies trade rules such as rules of origin which dictates what proportion of a product must be made in its country of origin. Nigeria. Nigerian authorities launch app to monitor crude oil theft. For a very long time, Nigeria's economy has been ravaged by the incessant crude oil theft that has made it impossible for the country to meet its crude oil production quota. The federal government disclosed that the country loses about 400,000 barrels of crude oil per day to theft, translating to a drop from 1.8 million to 1.4 million barrels per day. Reports disclosed that Nigeria lost a staggering $1 billion in revenue in the first quarter of 2022, endangering the economy of Africa's top producer. This despicable trend of oil theft has continued to impose an existential threat to the oil and gas sector and by extension to the Nigerian economy. If measures are not put in place to stop it, in a bid to put a stop to crude oil theft in Nigeria, the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited NNPC, has recently launched a mobile app to monitor crude oil theft in the country. The launch of the mobile app took place in Abuja at the signing of renewed production sharing contracts agreement between NNPC NNPC and its partners in oil mining leases. NNPC disclosed that the platform crude theft monitoring applications was created for members of host communities and other Nigerians to enable early reporting of incidents of oil theft to spur immediate action from relevant securities and government authorities. Also, they have encouraged whistleblowing which they revealed will be a relevant form of security. Kenya. Kenyan election chiefs math questioned. The vice chair of Kenya's election commission, Juliana Cherera, was one of the four commissioners who refused to endorse the results of the presidential results announced on August 15th. She claimed that if you added the percentages as announced by chairperson of the commission, Wafula Chabukati, the sum came to 100.01%. The claim needs to be tested and could be down to a rounding error, but Ms. Cherera described this as a mathematical absurdity that defied logic. She added that the results of the presidential election did not reflect the opinion of the commissioners because they had to process them before they were declared and they did not get to see all of them. Mali. French troops fully withdraw from Mali, ending nine-year deployment. The last soldiers belonging to France's Bakhane operation in Mali have now left the African country, the French chief of staff said on Monday. French forces have been supporting Mali against insurgents for nearly a decade, but President Emmanuel Macron decided to pull out after France and the Malian military government fell out in the wake of a military takeover. After ties ruptured between Paris and Bamako in August 2020, France began to withdraw its troops in February as jihadist violence surged in the Sahel. Friction developed over the military's delays in restoring civilian rule and escalated when Mali brought in Russian paramilitaries from the Wagner Group. In a statement on August 15th, the French presidency said that France remains engaged in the wider Sahel region, in the Gulf of Guinea and the Lake Chad region, with all partners committed to stability and to the fight against terrorism. South Africa African penguins endangered by shipping noise in Algoa Bay 
The already endangered African penguin is being pushed away from its pure habitat off the east coast of South Africa, resulting from noise from ship refueling. A scientific research has discovered the variety of African penguins on St. Croix Island in Algoa Bay, with one of the world's largest breeding colony of birds, has plummeted since South Africa began to permit ships to refuel at sea, a course of often known as bunkering six years ago, the research discovered. Situated in a busy shipping lane along South Africa's east coast, Algoa Bay is rich in marine and bird life, where southern right whales roam in its sheltered waters. The new study, published on August 10th in the peer-reviewed Science of the Total Environment Journal, showed that elevated noise levels affect marine animals' ability to find coral prey, communicate or navigate properly, and is the first to explore the impact of marine time traffic noise pollution on a seabird and the consequences of offshore bunkering activities on underwater noise levels. South Africa's marine Time Safety, SAMSA, in 2016 awarded the country's first offshore bunkering operator's license to Aegean Marine in a controversial closed tender, and then awarded two subsequent licenses to SA Marine Fuels and Heron Marine in 2018 and 2019, respectively. In 2019, oiled penguins were found in Algoa Bay after an oil spill from ship to ship bunkering, and conservationists have called for bunkering to be banned in the bay. Pichegru said penguins in the St. Croix Islands were already struggling to breed due to a variety of challenges, including industrial fishing of scarce prey. Aspera Environmental groups sue U.S. over Puerto Rico dredging plan The Heart of Biodiversity has filed a lawsuit in opposition to the U.S. authorities on August 16th, accusing it of endangering wildlife and other people because it prepares to dredge and develop Puerto Rico's largest bay to accommodate big tankers that may serve as a brand new pure liquid fuel terminal. The non-profit organization stated that the U.S. Military Corps of Engineers' $60 million undertaking will take away 2.2 million cubic feet of seafloor sediment to deepen and widen San Juan Bay's delivery channels. The dredging will take greater than 12 months and a number of materials transported to the close by Candado Lagoon Estuary, a place where manatees and starfish are a typical site may be greatly affected. The lawsuit additionally notes that if the dredging is accomplished and the terminal is operational, a number of overburdened environmental justice communities close to and across the north coast of U.S. territory could also be in danger from air pollution, explosions, and oil spills. The grievance is the most recent hit of plans to construct liquefied pure fuel import terminal in San Juan, which has come under intense scrutiny. In June, a federal appeals court which stated that New York-based New Fortress Power, Inc. had not obtained the required permits earlier than beginning building of the terminal and wanted to be reviewed by the federal power regulatory fee. Environmental teams have lengthily rejected the terminal's buildings, demanding that Puerto Rico cut back its reliance on fossil fuels. Diaspora Two former cops awaiting trial in George Floyd case reject plea deal. The two remaining officers awaiting trial on state charges in the killing of George Floyd rejected a plea deal on August 17th, paving the way for their trial to begin on October 24th. Tu Thao and J. Alexander Kuing were charged with aiding and abating second-degree murder and second-degree manslaughter. They were offered the same plea deal as another former officer, Thomas Lane, who pleaded guilty in May to aiding and abating second-degree manslaughter. Thao, Kuing, and Lane had initially rejected plea deals from the state, prosecuting disclosed in April. Floyd, a black father, died May 25, 2020 after being arrested on suspicion of passing a counterfeit $20 bill to buy cigarettes at Cup Foods, a convenience store. He was 46. Cohen knelt on Floyd's back. Lane held down his legs and Thao stood nearby and kept concerned bystanders at bay. Floyd's killing was captured by a bystander video and set off protest in Minneapolis and around the world against police brutality and racial injustice. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, follow, share and like our video. It's the best way of supporting us. And remember, Africa is watching.